the next point I wanted to make was competitive tender on a like-for-like -like basis. Compare apples with apples. Um, if you just phone up a managing agent and say, send us a proposal for managing our site, uh, you'll get one that looks like that, and you'll get one that looks like that, and you won't be able to compare the two. Um, again, Armour produces a very good booklet, which is called Appointing a Managing Agent. It's available to download on their website, and it includes, as one of its annexes, um, a list of questions that you should be asking. And a very good way of tendering for a managing agent is to get that list of questions and send it to that managing agent and send it to that managing agent and send it to that managing agent and ask them all to answer the same questions. And then you've got something when you get your tenders in that you can actually compare on a like-for-like -like basis and, uh, and decide who's, who's the right person for you. Uh, the importance of the management agreement. Um, I'm going to talk some more about management agreements, so I won't, uh, I won't particularly dwell on this point, but it's all very well interviewing a managing agent, getting them to answer a test tender uh, questionnaire. Ultimately, the legal relationship you enter into with them is the management agreement, and so you need to make sure that that agreement reflects whatever it is you've discussed that that managing agent's going to do for you, um, because if it doesn't, uh, that will be the standards they work to rather than necessarily what they promised you they were going to do over here. So uh, it's important to make sure the management agreement is, um, is, is correctly worded and reflects whatever it is that you, you actually want the agent to do for you. Just, just on that, on the management agreement, yes. uh, we have a management agreement obviously and the developer drew up with our managing agent. How legally binding is that uh, 20, 25 years into the lease? And is it something that can be renegotiated or, or out of? Because it is unfair to the leaseholders. It says in ours, for example, that we need 75% of the people to, in order to uh, change the uh, management company, which is just completely unfair and means that we're never going to be able to do that. Can I answer that when I get to management agreements? Yeah. Because the answer is it depends on the terms of that agreement. You know, it depends precisely what that agreement says. Um, and you also need to understand um, which, who are parties to what agreement and therefore who is entitled to benefit from or the rights and obligations of that particular agreement. And regrettably, the leaseholders are very unlikely to be a party to the management agreement. Um, and therefore, you as a leaseholder on your own possibly have no say whatsoever over that agreement. Just, just another point on that from, from our honest point of view. These management agreements, they are very sort of secretive and they're not known by the leaseholder at all, but they really affect the leaseholder. Shouldn't Armour introduce something that these have to be disclosed to the leaseholders? I have a copy of ours, but I shouldn't have. I, mean, I got it through perseverance, but nobody else does, nobody else has seen it. Not even the current landlord. <clears throat> Can I part of that and come back to it? Um, I, I will come back to it when we, uh, when we get to management It's another topic that we're going to be dealing with today. I just want to make one comment before we move on to getting very thorny. I think for me, one of the big changes I've noticed in Liverpool over the, the last decade, and some of it's due to the work engage has done, is that there was no process involved in choosing a new managing agent at all. It was just word of mouth or, you know, smoke-filled backroom work guys would get together and someone was recommended by somebody else. And what we've tried to do is, is to put a process in that people really do. So for example, at City Key, when we had our change of management company, uh, we went through, we brought people to the site, we walked around the site with them, we got them to discuss what do you think of it. And we asked questions that don't appear on the armour thing, like what did you notice about our site? What did you think was good? What did you think needs to be improved? giving each one the ability to look critically and creatively from their own perspective on what they would add. So we were looking for added value as well. Then we went into a proper procurement process where everybody had to fill in exactly the same form, which we did online. Um, and then that was shortlisted by us uh, where we brought external people in to enable us to make sure we were shortlisting appropriately using all the stuff you were talking about. Then we went through an interview process, which again was rigorously monitored. So we actually, because we were nervous that we had Trinity Estates, who we were very nervous about getting rid of them, that they wouldn't like the fact that we'd actually would come back to us. So we had two panels doing interviewing. We had the, the, the people who could make the decision, the 
directors of the company ourselves. But we we set up another panel monitoring what we were doing, and they took notes on all our questions on what we did, how we went through the process, so that if in the eventuality being taken to court by Trinity States, we would have the backup of some really significant independent people within the industry who could verify the rigidity and the professionalism of the process we undertook. And I've got to say, and we also knew because we'd done work with, with yourself and previously on the Engage Endorsed workshops, we knew the importance of the contract or the management agreement. So we'd, we'd written a contract that we were happy with based completely on the dreadful experience of having Trinity Estates. So our biggest concern, which has not proved to be realistic at all, was that how can we get rid of somebody quickly who's a complete disaster? And so we set up a contract that enabled us to the, we've never needed to go back to that contract. And I'm sure this will come up. But I think I just wanted to stress, there is a process that we can follow. And Engage does accompany particular developments and encourages that absolutely rigorous professional uh, because we're dealing with uh, leaseholders money here and we want I think most of us are not in the business of having the cheapest um, uh, service charge around but we want to make sure our, the value of our asset is protected and enhanced and that's the quality that Engage tries to offer. I mean, uh, I mean what you've absolutely got to avoid is out of the frying pan into the fire. You know, it, it's, it's a big exercise changing your managing agent. It requires mobilisation, it requires organisation. Uh, and the last thing you want to do is get rid of one and find the one you've appointed is worse. Yeah. Um, so it's, you know, it's really important to, to get exactly that right. And that was exactly the experience in Liverpool. When we started yeah. talking, people were saying, well, we're now on our third managing agent and he's no better than the first one we had. And or it's the best of a bad bunch. Mm. Well, we didn't want the best of a bad bunch. We wanted the best of the best that was out there. Mm.